In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Dear Reverend Fathers, dear faithful, each of the mysteries of our most blessed faith tell us something about God. We are meant to contemplate these mysteries. We are meant to reflect upon them during the duration of our whole life so that we can know God better and so love him more and serve him in this life. And if this is true about all the mysteries of our faith, it is especially true about the mystery of the most blessed sacrament. Our Lord tells us important things about himself in this mystery. There are two things especially that I think he tells us. If we, if we reflect on the implications of the most blessed sacrament, he's telling us that he wants to be close to us, and he is telling us that he wants to be hidden. Our Lord wants to be close to us. He wants to be very close to us. So close that he comes inside of us. Isn't that what happens in this mystery of the most blessed sacrament? It is an invention of the great, powerful mercy of God for us. Because God has almighty power, he gets to design the natural order in the supernatural order. And in the natural order, you know that, that there's only one situation in which one person can be inside another person. That is, of course, when a child is in the womb of its mother, is being formed in the, in the mother's womb. That's the only situation when one person is inside of another. You think of the closeness between the mother and the child during those nine months. The child is dwelling there. What does our Lord do? Our Lord also designs a supernatural order. And he makes, through his almighty power, this situation where he comes inside of us. You know that he became incarnate. He was conceived by the Holy Ghost in the womb of the Virgin Mother. And from that moment, he, he dwelled on this earth. He dwelled in, in the womb of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary, and there was this period of, of nine months where, where he was there in her womb, and, and she was forming him with, with her own flesh. And we can think about how close Our Lady is to our Lord as a result. But this incarnation, this taking of flesh, makes it possible when, when our Lord comes out for, for him to come also to us. And this is what he wanted to do. This is what he did. He decided that he would make himself present all around the world in this most blessed sacrament by the power of the priest, summoning him from heaven, making him present on our altars so that he could offer himself once more to the Heavenly Father at the Mass and then come inside of you because he wants to be close to you. Why does he want to do this? Why is this dis decision of our Lord? Well, obviously, it's because he loves us. He wants to come to us because he, he wants to love us. If you, if you want to be close to somebody, it's because you love them. Our Lord knows that without him, we are lost. We are, we are like that crowd without food. We have nothing to eat. We are starving. We cannot survive. We will die. And he wants to give us himself as our nourishment. We could ask him this question, Lord, why do you come so close? Why do you want to come so close? Of course, we have the answer. We have the answer in today's gospel when he himself first revealed this mystery, first revealed this intention of his most sacred heart to come into us. He said what he was about. He answers us, He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood has everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last day. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eats me 
the same also shall live by me. He that eats this bread shall live forever. I want to be close to you because I want you to live. Without me, you will die. I want to give you eternal life. That's the reason. My dear faithful, while our Lord wants to be close to us, do we want to be close to him? Do we have that same desire that he has? He has gone to such lengths to come inside of us. What are our dispositions when we receive him? What's going on in our heart? Have we prepared a place for him when he comes? Considering that this is the most important guest, far more important than any guest that comes to our home. Have we prepared our soul? Have we adorned it with the virtues that makes him delight to be in our soul? The virtues that he loves especially of humility and charity. What is our attitude when we go to the communion rail and then walk away and go back to our pew? Are we able to focus upon him? Are we able to think about him? Are we able to make those acts of adoration, of love, of thanksgiving, petition? We just immediately get distracted. What happens after Mass? The priest walks away. Do we walk away as well, forgetting that we still have our Lord within us? And there's some precious moments for us to spend with him, to talk to him. Our Lord so desires to be close to us. There's something to, for us to do on our part. We have to be, desire to be close to him as well. We have to return his love. The other thing that our Lord wants, if we think about this mystery of the Blessed Sacrament, the other thing that our Lord wants is he wants to be hidden. He hides himself. He comes close to us, and he hides himself in this sacrament. He's hiding under the accidents of bread and wine. He becomes so little. He's not there with his proper extension, as the theologians say. Why is he hiding? If he wants to come close to us, why is he hiding from us? When he comes, this is a big question for us to ask. I've thought a lot about it. I think the answer is this. I think the closest thing I can compare it to is, is the courtship between a man and a woman. When a, a man and a woman are courting, what are they doing? They're they're testing their relationship. They're testing their love. They're wanting to see if, if they have a love that's strong enough to make it through all the trials and tribulations of marriage. It's a time of discernment. You know that our Lord often compares heaven to a wedding feast. And what are we doing in this life? We're getting ready for that wedding feast. Heaven. We're getting ready for the eternal joys of heaven. But we're not ready yet. We have to prove our love to our Lord while we exist on this earth, in this life. And the Lord has to make sure that we really love him. He has to make sure that, that he disposes us to love him. He gives us an opportunity to love him. And he doesn't spoil our motives When a young man and a young woman are, are courting, as they say, they're, they're, they're seeing, okay, do, do we love one another such that we're going to honor one another, such that we're going to sacrifice ourselves for one another, such that we're going to be virtuous towards one another? Or are we just looking for ourselves? Are we just looking for our own pleasure? You know how much it spoils a relationship if, if they indulge in the pleasures of, of marriage, 
before the time of marriage comes. If I may say, if they don't keep hidden what is meant to be hidden until the time of marriage, it spoils their love. It makes it selfish, self-serving, and it makes them doubt about whether their love will last because they don't have that proper reserve. I think this is what is going on here. With our Lord in the most blessed sacrament, he comes so close to us, but he hides himself at the same time. He's testing our love. He wants us to prove our love to him, and so he gives us a way to prove that love through the virtue of faith. We believe, we love, we make these acts, but we don't see him. We don't, we don't have the, the, the sense contact with, with our eyes and our ears. He's just there under the appearances of this humble piece of bread. And it's a test of faith. It's a great test of faith. We look at, through the history of the church since this mystery was revealed, how difficult it has been for people to hold on to faith in the most blessed sacrament. How many people have failed to do so? Think of the Protestants leaving the Catholic Church in the 1500s. All of them rejecting the real presence. They don't believe in the real presence. Think of the difficulty for Catholics today to hold on to this belief in the context of the Novus Ordo Mass, which does not show a proper respect to our Lord. Or you have this sad statistic that fewer than 50% of Catholics today believe in the real presence. It's truly a, a terrible statistic. And there's, there's this, um, I would say, very praiseworthy effort here in the United States this year um, from, from the bishops to promote devotion to the Most Blessed Sacrament. But at the same time, they don't, they don't want to bring back the Mass. It, it is a proper environment for the respect due to the real presence. Faith in the Blessed Sacrament, because our Lord comes under these humble appearances, has to be carefully guarded or it will be lost. Our Lord cannot do it any other way. He, 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 has, he has to make sure that, that we truly love him. And if he just revealed himself in his glory and overwhelmed us, we would not love him in a proper way. It's, it's like the apparition to Mary Magdalene after the resurrection. And she realizes it's him, and she, she reaches out to, to grab him, to touch him. And he says, no, don't touch me. For I have not yet risen to the Father. Before my resurrection, it was a time for me to be with you. But now that I have entered into my glory, it's no longer going to be that, going to be that way. It's going to be the time of faith. And so, from then on, our Lord hides himself. It's touching when, when we look at the, the history of, of these past 2,000 years and, and Catholics believing in the Most Blessed Sacrament, but at the same time struggling with this faith, that our Lord sometimes has, has intervened to boost our faith by performing Eucharistic miracles. Eucharistic miracles usually happen in one of two situations. First of all, when there's doubt on, on the part of those who believe, but they, they're struggling with their belief. Secondly, when there's sacrilege going on, when the, when the Eucharist is not being treated in the proper way. So, for instance, in, in 1263, there was this German priest who was, who was traveling to Italy. He was near a place called Orvieto, where, where the Pope at the time was, was living at that moment. And he believed, but, but he doubted the most blessed sacrament. And it was at the, at the time of the consecration, and he, he pronounces the words of consecration. And immediately the host just starts bleeding. 
with these drops of blood flowing over his hands onto the corporal. And he's just shocked. And he stopped the Mass. Because the Pope was nearby, he, he went to the Pope, and he, he confessed to the Pope, I, w- I was doubting the Most Blessed Sacrament. And look, Holy Father, this is, this is what happened to the host. It was a miracle from our Lord to confirm him in his faith in the Most Blessed Sacrament. To this day, you can go to Orvieto. You can see this corporal with the blood stains upon it. In 1996, in the Diocese of Buenos Aires, in Argentina, there was a priest who said to Mass. After the Mass, there was, there was a woman who came, who came up to him, and she said, Father, there's a host in one of those candle holders you know, doing communion in the hand. Communion in the hand, people can just take the host. They can just run off with it. Or they just throw it aside. Somebody put the host in the candle holder. So the priest took the host, and he put it in a, in a vessel of water. This is what you do. You, you, you put it in a vessel of water for the, for the host to dissolve. And he put it in the tabernacle. A couple of days later, he opens the tabernacle, and he notices that this host had grown, and it had changed into human flesh. And the, the cardinal archbishop of uh, um, Buenos Aires at the time, you know who it was? It was, it was Pope Francis. Pope Francis, uh, Cardinal Bergoglio, he said to the priest, we, we are going to take this, we're going to send it to New York to have it examined in a lab to see, see what this is. And they examined this, this host that had turned into flesh, and they said, this is human flesh. It's human flesh from, from right beside the heart. And there's, there's no way that, that there should be any white blood cells in this. White blood cells, once they're separated from the body, they die immediately. But there's all these white blood cells in this piece of flesh. It was our Lord. He's saying, I'm here. I'm here in this most blessed sacrament. So, my dear faithful, by his invention of this incredible sacrament, our Lord shows us that he wants to be close to us and he wants to be hidden. It's so important that we want to be close to him. We are going to have a procession where we we honor our Lord in this most blessed sacrament. We thank him. We praise him. We sing songs to him. And we're going to receive Holy Communion. And during this Holy Communion, we are going to try to be close to him, as close as we can possibly be. Let us especially ask his own mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, for, for that grace, to have the same sentiments that were in her heart during those nine months in which he dwelt in her womb, that same love that she has for her son, so that through our our devout Holy Communions, our Lord may give us everlasting life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.